Hello everyone, my name is Asa Sands, and welcome to another Statistical Anomaly video. Today we are going to be covering the first part, part one, of how to make a modern themed dashboard in Tableau Desktop. And without further ado, let's get started. So this is a completely empty Tableau workbook that I just opened. So first things first, you always need to connect to a data source. Hey, there's the video game uh, sales modern dashboard right there. So um, <clears throat> to a file is where you go and then more um, or if you want to click to a csv or, or some excel uh, thing but this file that we're using is vgsales.csv uh, the this file was downloaded from kaggle.com i'll put a link in the description below to how to get to that file and so go ahead and pause the video right now go and download it and get this all input just kind of like how i showed you you're just going to double click on this file and then um, you can get caught up here. So uh, this is, we're gonna use the, the data interpreter. Uh, sometimes it messes up your data. Um, so uh, sometimes you can't use it, but I always prefer using the data interpreter if it doesn't mess up my data. Um, we're gonna click on this year here because this isn't technically a number, this is a date. So we're just gonna switch that to a date. There we go, it's all loaded, perfect. <clears throat> Okay, so we're gonna cover what this data is real quick. So rank, I have no idea what that means. Um, the name is the name of the game. So like they're Tetris, uh, classic. Uh, the platform is released on, so you've got the Wii, the NES, uh, the Xbox 360, the PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, and then the date that it was released. So you've got 2010, 2004, you know, 1998. Um, this is how you're gonna, this is what you're gonna use to make your time series graphs. Um, genre, so is it a role-playing game, a puzzle game, platformer game, etc. And then the publisher, the person who published the the um, the game. So you've got Microsoft Game Studios, Take Two Interactive, Nintendo, and then how much they sold of that game. Not how much money they made. It's how much, indi how many individual copies they sold. So Wii Sports sold 41 million uh, NA sales, and this is all in million, by the way. Uh, 41 million games in, a, or in NA or North America and then EU, Europe and JP, which is Japan and then other locations and then the entire global uh, economy. So that's the, the data. Um, you can make this into an extract or um, you can save it right now. I'm not going to save it quite yet, uh, but uh, you can do that now if you want. <clears throat> so we're going to go into our first sheet and at first we are going to start by making our graphs. So here's the, uh, this, the dashboard we're going to be making. We're going to start by making these individual graphs. These graphs are here, the North America sales and then the, the publisher sales for each of those regions. So we are going to start by doing that. So first off, let's start with Japan. We're going to throw Japan up here into text. Oh, first we've got to name it. Oh my goodness, always name your stuff first. Um, <clears throat> so we're just going to do this, uh, Japan total sales. Sounds good to me. And then here we go. We've got the Japan total sales. And we are simply just going to click on text. We are going to click on the three dots here. And we are going to put MM sales after it. And we're going to highlight the whole thing. And we're going to 18. Yeah, yeah, that looks good. And we're going to click on it. OK, there you go. Perfect. <clears throat> Not much to do there. We're just going to click right click on the sheet tab here. And we're going to click duplicate and then we're going to do that again until we have four so now we're just going to click on the second one and we're going to delete the two and let's do na next north america so na sales we're just going to click there boom it keeps all of our formatting so it's really nice to just duplicate things like this where uh, we pretty much have four copies that just have different data in it um, so we're just going to do that uh, eu And then let's drag the EU up here. And then here, let's do other sales. Perfect. All right. Well, we're done with those. That was easy. So now we're just going to make a new sheet here. And we are going to start doing the actual graphs. So let's start. Uh, let's do JP because we did that first last time. We're going to do the sum of JP sales right up here on the top. We're going to do publisher here in the rows, and you can see we've got all the publishers, tons of dead space. So what we want to do is we want to click on the little arrow next to publisher, and we're going to click sort, and we're going to switch this data source order to nested, and we're going to switch it to descending. 
So now we have the most sales at the top as it descends to the least. And it's focused on JP sales and the aggregation is sum, which is what we want. So that's looking pretty slick now. What we want to do now is we want to start formatting this to look nice the way we want it to. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on this. We're going to click on show header so it will actually not show the header. We're going to right click on this so it will not show this header. And we're going to drag publisher to the filters. And we are going to tell it to take the top by field 10 of JP sales that is aggregated by sum. And we're just going to click OK. Boom, it's only showing us the top 10 publishers now. And we're going to go right click in this just kind of empty space here and click on format. And then we're going to go to this fill icon here, right up here. And we are going to change this background to none. And then in these lines right here, we're just going to click lines. On the sheet, we're going to do this one is none, this one is none, and this one is none. So the top two and the bottom two. And then we're going to go to columns and we're going to change this top one to none. As you can see, that has disappear that has caused all of these slight gray lines to disappear from our graph um, and so we're just going to click on this little x up here in the format lines and now we need to get these labels back we have no idea what the hell any of this means so we need to uh we're doing japan right oh man Oops, yep japan jp sales we didn't name our sheet well at least i didn't if you did good job you're doing what you're supposed to this is japan publisher sales so we're just going to drag Japan sales to the label, and we're going to drag the publisher to the label. Boom. So now we got all that. We're just going to click on label now, click on the three dots like we did earlier, and we're going to take publisher. We're going to control X, which is cut, and then control V, which is paste. We're going to go space hyphen space. And then right here at the end, we're going to go MM and then sales. And we're just going to leave it at nine, leave it black. Oh, yeah, we're not going to change anything else. There you go. Now we know what, what company it is and the amount of sales. And we're just gonna click on label one more time, go down to alignment right here, click on automatic, and then switch it to a left, a left alignment. So now we've got everything inside the bars and it looks kind of bad because we can't really see through this color. So we're gonna change the color to do something else. In the, uh, in the actual one, I think I use this color uh, yeah, I use this color in order to do it. Um, I'm going to change it up. I'm going to do this light blue. I think this light blue looks really nice. So um, you need to be able to read. You can switch it to whatever color you want. It is total personal preference. Um, this is just a color that I think is going to look really nice. You need to be able to read the data or read the labels without any problem. That is the most important thing with pick, picking your color. If you pick too dark of a color, you may go into labels here and then um, you can right click on these and go to format and you can go to sheet and then you can change uh, what color your font is in this section. So um, you can do that if you want, uh, but I'm just going to keep it uh, simple. So here we're going to start duplicating. We're going to do the same trick. We're just going to duplicate out four times. Uh, Japan is done, so let's go, what was the second one we did? We did NA, so let's just switch over to NA. So we're just going to click NA sales up here. We're going to cover the other one with NA sales. We're going to cover this one with NA sales. Notice how this all just changes, keeping our formatting. But notice how it's all super messed up and it's not filtered anymore. That's because when we click on this arrow and we go back to sort, you can see that it's still descending by JP sales. So we can see the North America sales by Japan. <laughs> But uh, that's not only slightly confusing, but it's also um, not what we want to cover in this uh, dashboard. Uh, you can make a dashboard out of that. Go, feel free to do that. But um, I'm going to switch this to NA sales. And you can see it refilters it. And then we also want to go to this publisher. You can just double click on the publisher and you can see it's still taking the top 10 JP sale companies. We're going to switch to NA sales. And there you go. Now we have the top 10 North America publishers that sold the most in North America. So you can see Nintendo is still pretty much killing it, but you have Electronic Arts up there that's pretty popular. Microsoft Game Studios is actually up there further than I would think they would be. So uh, let's move on. Double click this. Japan. We are going to switch this Japan to EU, Europe. So same spiel. Slide EU up there. Slide EU up here. Double click on this. Make sure this is EU. Click OK. I'm going a little faster now that this is the second time we've done this. And then we're going to go to Publisher, Sort, change this to EU Sales. Boom. 
All right, there we go. EU is done. Now we're going to name this one to the last one, which is other. Other sales. Ba -ba. Wherever other sales is, there it is. There we go. Okay, um, also one thing that uh, is kind of weird is when you start messing with this stuff, it brings back a header. So we're just gonna get rid of these headers. Get rid of them. Cool, now we have all of them set. So now let's make our dashboard. Let's call it modern dashboard. And this is kind of the concepting phase. Uh, most people that I know do this. Uh, you pretty much just uh, start here and you just start throwing things in and rearranging it until you get a design that you like. <laughs> it doesn't have to look pretty, you just have to get a design that you like. A couple things that are really important here, instead of using tiled, we're going to use floating. That's a very important distinction. With tiled, when you drag a thing over, it's going to fill the entire place because it's a tile. Uh, we're going to use floating, so then instead when I drag it over, it drags over in a box that I can drag anywhere else. You can always click on this more options and switch it between floating and tiled whenever you want, just click on this little check mark and it will switch it between the two, but it'll save you a lot of time if you just bring them over as floating. Um, also, what we're gonna be doing is we're going to be switching the size to a custom size of 1500 by 800. Normally, I like switching this to automatic and I like making dashboards in automatic and then using tiled. I feel like it's just a very clean way of doing dashboards. But unfortunately, the way that this modern theme dashboard works is that will never fly. You have to set a size so that no matter how large or small the viewer's monitor is, they will always see the exact same thing that you're looking at. And it's probably the more professional way to do it, honestly. But I always prefer using automatic. Uh, it's just a personal preference. Um, fault me if you wish, but that's what I like doing. Uh, but in this situation, we need to use a fixed size. I'm going to use a 15 by 800 or 1500 by 800. Feel free to change it to whatever you want. You can see I've got a little bit of dead space I'm not using, but I feel like this is a pretty generic uh, monitor size. You can always click on this instead of doing custom. You can switch it to oh, what a laptop browser size is, or a, de a desktop browser, a generic desktop. You know, you can switch it to any of those. Uh, presets, but I like 1500 by 1800 for this specific uh, uh, dashboard. So let's do the total sales, let's do Japan total sales, let's do NA total sales, uh, EU total sales, and other total sales. Cool. All right, we've kind of got, I kind of want them to be here. I think I'm going to put the uh, thing just like just like the other dashboard showed. I'm going to put the um, labels here. I think I'm going to change some th a couple things real quick. But um, then we're going to do Japan publisher sales, NA publisher sales, EU publisher sales, and then other publisher sales. We're going to go right here. We're just going to right click on the titles. We're going to hide title, hide title, hide title, and hide title. So now. And then you can just kind of line them up if you really want. But this is just a rough draft. This is just so that you can kind of see what's going on. So here we go. This is kind of our rough draft. This is the beginning of what our dashboard is going to look like. It looks a little sloppy. It looks a little empty now. But believe me, as we continue on through the series, it will look better and better. So uh, this concludes part one. If you like what's going on here, hit the like button. And I will see you in the next one.